and welcome to the September meeting of the Town of Poughkeepsie Zoning Board of Appeals. Would you please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening. Uh, for those that are new to the procedures of the ZBA, the, tonight's meeting is divided into two halves. During the first half, we will hold public hearings on each of the applications that have been submitted. Um, during For the public hearing, we'll ask each applicant to come forward, uh, to state their name, and to be sworn in. Um, all testimony before the ZBA has to be sworn testimony. Um, following that, we'll ask the applicant to give a very brief description of why they are here seeking a variance. Um, we have obviously read your application, so we don't need to go into a lot of detail, but to just give us a quick overview to, to remind everybody. Um, after that, each member of the board will be, have an opportunity to ask questions about the application. And when that's finished, the floor will be open to anyone from the public that wishes to address that application, but that application only. When we've concluded, uh, we'll close the public hearing and move on to the next item. Um, we'll take them in the order in which they're listed on the agenda, and there are copies of the agenda that are available in the little tray next to our um, council's um, chair. The second half of the meeting uh, will be the deliberation phase. During this part, there will be no further public input, but you're welcome to stay and listen. Uh, the board will discuss the application um, and then uh, take a vote on it. Um, I, the agenda is fairly short tonight, so um, I don't think uh, you know there'll be a be a problem waiting. But if you need to go. Um, fine, and you can call the office in the morning to get the results. Okay, uh, on our agenda, item number one, uh, Dolores Doyle at 28 Darlene Drive. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Alan Doyle. I'm here to represent my mother, who is Dolores Doyle. Mr. Doyle, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Please be advised that you are under oath, and any false statements made by you are subject to perjury pursuant to the laws of the state of New York. Understood. Okay, you can just have a seat, um, get comfortable, and let's just make sure that the microphone there works. Hello? No. Uh, that did I can hear it. Okay, we're fine. We're okay. fine. Okay, um, so just briefly, what's uh, uh, briefly? Uh, my mother is selling the home. We purchased it in 1970, roughly a few years after which an addition was built onto the back of the structure. The addition followed the original lines of the pre existing house. Uh, apparently, the back end of the structure tips within the uh, undesirable range uh, near the edge of the property. So we're just asking for a variance that the house be sold um, and everything following permits. Okay. Uh, Christine, any questions? No questions. Betty? I have no questions. Art? <coughs> Excuse me. No questions. Um, my only question, and in, 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 I didn't have a t chance to research this, sure. but... Um, since the addition was built, I would have been in 1970, there have been at least a couple of different revisions of the zoning code. Do you know, and I suspect that when the addition was built, it did conform to the setback requirements? I believe so, yes. Since, However, since the original house right. did. Uh, the addition was initiated by my father, who has since deceased, and also the architect and foreman that he had helped build the structure has also passed away, so we have no obtainable records. <clears throat> right, right. I'm, my, my recollection is that those side yard, that they may well, the side yard requirement may well have been 15 feet. 
back um, when the house and the addition were built. I, I am, that's not to my okay. knowledge. Sorry, I, I, I don't okay. either. But I was a fishing expedition. Okay, <laughs> Larry. No questions. Tony. No questions. Carmen. Yes. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the application at 28 Darlene Drive? If not, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Recusals? Okay. Thank you. Thank you kindly. <clears throat> Item number two, Mariano Perez, 16 South Grand Avenue. Good evening. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Is, uh, is this looks the same as what was submitted with the application? It is. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, we we can get we can get an easel set up and. Can I just make two? She's got. It. Um, Oh yeah, we have, I mean we have the, the, the very latest in audiovisual equipment here. Good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Pilon. I'm a registered architect in the state of New York. I'm here with Mr. Perez. Uh, okay, have it please have a seat. Thank, thank you. Mr. Perez and Mr. Helon, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I help you, God. I do. I do. Please be advised that you are under oath, and any false statements made by you are subject to perjury, pursuant to the laws of the state of New York. Very good. Okay. So, so good evening. Um, I'm here with Mr. Perez tonight. Um, Mr. Perez and his family live at 16 South Grand Avenue. Um, at one point, that building was used as a funeral home on the lower level and a single-family dwelling unit on the second floor. Um, Mr. Perez would like to convert that lower level into a dwelling unit. He would like to allow his sister to live in the second floor dwelling unit. We have prepared our documents. We have the site plan. Um, the, the building and the lot currently meet all of the bulk regulation requirements, uh, with the exception of a footnote. And that footnote is regarding unit density. Um, it requires that there is uh, 7,260 square feet of lot area per dwelling unit. And currently, his existing lot is approximately 7,000 square feet. So we need a variance for that second unit. Um, we did do a little research, looked at some of the adjacent properties in the neighborhood. Um, there are They are listed in my narrative, but there's approximately five to six existing legal uh, two-family homes that have densities that are um, in excess of what we are requesting. Um, it, the building is located in the Arlington Town Center. Interestingly enough, the, the line from the city and town go right through his living room. But we checked with the city of Poughkeepsie, and they have deferred to the town of Poughkeepsie regarding this matter. Um, I think that pretty much is it. Uh, I think that if given this variance, he will his property will sort of conform with what the neighborhood's intentions are. Uh, so we're hopeful that you will find it favorable to grant the variance. Okay, thank you, Christine. No, I don't have any questions. Betty, um, was there any kind of a special? I mean, what was it before when it had the funeral parlor? downstairs and I mean that's a mixed use right there so it must already be some sort of mixed use how was that if I don't I, know how that I was may. looked at yes my interpretation of it is is that because it hasn't been used as a funeral home for so long it is it's just reverted to a single family home uh, according to the Dutchess County website uh, property survey it indicates that it's a 210, which would be a single family home. Okay. Yes. That's the only question I okay. have. Though I believe in the Arlington Town Center, mixed uses are right. both permitted and, in fact, in some cases, cases of readaptive use, they're encouraged. Correct. So, uh, my, so my reading of the, we, we do intend to go to the planning board. Um, it is a permitted use. Granting a but granted a permit from the planning board. 
hopefully that's Thursday night. Okay, and and that permit would cover all of the issues of water and sewer and parking. Correct, and so and, on. And, and and on parking, just so the, for the board's information. The requirement is 1.5 parking spaces per unit, so he would re be required to have three. And if you were to look at the site map, there is an existing paved area behind his home, which will accommodate those three cars. Right, we went back there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? No, I'm fine. Okay, all right. I'm good, no problem. Okay. Uh, and my understanding, the only change in the actual footprint will be the addition of a small porch in in the rear. Correct. We are not changing the existing footprint other than the addition of a, a, a small deck approximately four feet by six feet just to give us access to the rear door. Okay. And mm -hmm. the two units will have separate entrances? They're going to have a shared entrance on the, on South Grand Avenue with, with a vestibule and from the vestibule then they'll each go to their individual unit. Okay. So from the exterior, it's still going to look like a single family home. And, and the, the, the rear entrance will be shared as well? Uh, actually, the rear entrance, that, that is not true. The rear entrance, the lower level has its own entrance, and there's an exterior set of stairs that will take you to the second floor existing unit. Okay. All right. Larry? No questions. Tony? No questions. Carmen? Um, I, I was just wondering with the... Um, Accessory apartments, it has to be owner-occupied. In, in this uh, case, is, is, does that apply? Mm, I no, it doesn't. Because this is, they're not applying for an accessory apartment. They're applying for a two-family use. It's a legally distinct right. use. <clears throat> so it's as if it were just two separate, separate units in legal terms, but they're just in the same building, in the same mm -hmm. structure. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Carmen, any, any, any further questions? Oh, no, no further okay. questions. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there are no other questions from the board, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address <coughs> the application at 16 South Grand? Hearing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. moved. Second. All in, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Recusals? Okay. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. Item three, Diane Mitchell, 67 Marple Road Extension. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Marvin. Yep, have a, have a seat. Thank you. Mr. Marvin, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I hope you got. I do. Please be advised that you are under oath, and any false statements made by you are subject to perjury pursuant to the laws of the state of New York. Okay. So we want to just refresh our memory about yes. the application. This is a, similar to the first application. This is a cleanup from some work that was done uh, in about 1976. And this is a substandard lot in the R20 district um, that has decks on both sides, uh, the east side of the house and the west side of the house. And the, um, the, the uh, bulk regulation is a 20-foot setback. One of the decks goes right up to the property line, so we need a full, a full variance on that to clean that up. And on the other side, there's a 5-foot um, set back between the side and, and, the, and the, uh, the deck for a pool. So, um, so uh, I'm the lawyer who's representing uh, Diane Mitchell, who's selling the house. Um, she's in assisted living now. She's been there since 1970, early 1970s. And these were built in about 76. Um, and her husband has passed away several years ago. Um, in the application, there are um, letters from both the neighbors that are immediately impacted by these decks on both sides that they have no objection to this um, and I think these have been there for so long and it, it doesn't really change the character of the neighborhood at all so this is really more or less to clean up these violations so that we can close on the sale of the house okay <clears throat> thank you Christine no questions Betty I have no question all right no questions um, I was we were out there on our field trip I think all of us were were quite impressed with the use that's been made of what is a small lot and to kind of maximize that and and uh, quite frankly it was wonderful to see the, um, the cooperation between particularly the, the, the neighbor on the west where, right. where where both have structures that abut right on the line and and have worked that out apparently 
Yeah, it's a small, it's 65 by 100 is the lot size, so, um, but anyway. Yeah. Larry. No question. Tony. No questions. Carmen. No questions. Okay. Anyone in the audience wish to address the application at 67 Marple Road Extension? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to close the public so hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Recusals? Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right. Um, Need a break? Take a break. <laughs> we take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we'll simply proceed. Oh, okay. Um, to um, item number one, this is Dolores Doyle, 28 Darlene Road, or Drive. Uh, this is a variance to allow an existing addition to a single family residence to be 17.3 feet from the side lot line where 20 feet is required. Uh, this is a type two action, so there's no um, in environmental um, um, judgments that we have to make. Uh, the county has not commented. Um, okay, any comments from the board? I mean, I think think um, it's been there a long time. Um, and uh, okay, so um, I move the board adopt as findings um, the following comments. Uh, one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of, of the variance. Um, <clears throat> the board notes that the um, addition was built many years ago, um, probably under a different zoning requirements. But in any case, it um, the, the addition um, matches um, many of the structures in the neighborhood. Uh, the, many of the houses were built, um, were, were small houses when they were built, and our, in our field trip um, uh, investigation, we noted that many of the houses in the neighborhood had, uh, there had been additions um, similar to the one th that this variance um, applies to. Whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method um, other than a variance, um, it's an existing structure. Um, there, there's, there's no feasible or practical way um, of doing this without a variance. Um, whether the requested area variance is substantial, um, the, actually the variance amounts to 2.7 feet. Um, given the neighborhood and given the, the existing structures, um, this, is, this is not a substantial variance. Whether the pro proposed variance will have an adverse uh, effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions, um, given the fact that that addition has been there um, for over 40 years um, without causing any difficulty, it's safe to assume um, that granting this variance will have no negative impact. Um, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, um, this, this, may, this may or may not be self-created, um, but it's also very possible that the, um, <clears throat> the variance um, is required by changes in the zoning code um, rather than in the structure itself, in which case um, it would not be self-created. Okay, um, I, I, I move that those uh, that we adopt those as findings. There's Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> all right, um, on the resolution itself, Christine, do you want to do that? Okay. I move that the board approve the request for an area variant set forth in item number one. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, results of site visits by board members, and the chairman's findings. In approving this variance, the board adopts uh, as findings the determination set forth by the chairman. Yes, in, 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 the, resol in the board's resolution. In the board's resolution. Basically resol adopted. Okay. Okay, or something like that. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, motion made in the second. So if there's no further discussion, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Recusals? 
Approved 7-0. Okay, item number two, Marion O. Perez, 16 South Grand Avenue. This is a variance to allow the conversion of an existing mixed use structure into two residential units with a density of 3,267 square feet per unit or a minimum of 7,260 square feet per unit is required. Again, this is a type two action and there's, um, the, the county has no comment. Um, what's the sense of the board on this? There's not going to be any visual um, difference to with, with the except for the addition of a landing in the back of the house. You know, you're not going to know from going by the front of the house that it has one family or two in it. It's a pretty big structure. It's those a lot of those houses in that area are very big and long. Yep. Yeah, it, it works for me. I mean, <clears throat> the fact that it had two different uses. Previously, um, I can't see where it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I my, my I used to live a couple of blocks from there, and uh, th there are a lot of two-family houses um, in that in that area. And in fact, many of those houses were built. Uh, this was built in 1900, so before the automobile. Um, th they typically were on on narrow but very deep lots, right. and uh, Many of them are big, you know, two-story wood frame houses. And um, actually, if you go over just a couple of streets, Corley's Avenue, I think just about every house up and down that is is a two-family. That's just the way they were built. So I, I don't see how this is going to have any, you know, real impact on the on the neighborhood. Um, I agree. Okay, all right. So, um, okay. So, I I move that the board adopt as findings um, the following determinations: um, one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. Um, the the board finds that um, using the um, structure at 16 South Grand Avenue as a two-family structure is um, consistent with uh, uses in the existing neighborhood and that um, given the past use as a funeral home um, the impact um, of a two-family house will probably be um, actually less than the um, the use as a funeral home um, and I, I, I say that because every time there was a funeral there the traffic on Grand Avenue was was <laughs> was a mess. Um, okay, two, whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue. Um, the issue really here is really the unit density um, and the on, only way, um, and actually given the um, dimensions of the lot, um, 7,000 square feet, um, it's below the minimum even for a for a single family use. So there's there's really no way that um, this large structure could be used for two families without a, a variance. Um, whether the requested area variance is substantial, um, it's substantial in, in in a mathematical sense in that the um, the <coughs> lot size uh, per unit will be. Um, actually a little less than half of what's required. Um, in terms of the existing neighborhood, um, this, this variance um, actually matches that of many of the properties, and so in that sense is, is not substantial. Four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions, um, the board finds it will have no um, adverse impact since the footprint of the uh, building will be almost identical to the current building. And finally, five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Um, the, um, the decision to uh, convert the structure into two families um, makes the 
the um, density requirement self-created, um, but given the um, uh, change in the in the zoning uh, that, that created the um, Arlington Town Center, um, th this is something that the applicant um, did not create. In any case. Um, whether or not it's self-created um, is, is, doesn't preclude the granting of the variance. So move. Second. <clears throat> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Betty, you want to do the motion? Okay. I move that the board approve the request for the area variance set forth in item number two. This decision is based on a review of the application, the testimony of the applicant, the testimony offered in the public hearing, and slight visits by board members. In approving this variance, I ask the board to adopt as findings the resolution as read by the chairman. Second. Okay, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Recusals? Okay, approved 7-0. That brings us to item number three, Diane Mitchell. 67 Marple Road Extension. This is a variance mm -hmm. to allow two existing decks to be one on the property line and two to be five feet from the property line where 20 feet is required for each. Um, again, this is a type two action and um, requires no environmental review and the county has no comment. Uh, Gather the so questions <laughs> that the, hmm? <laughs> that is such a cute little place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great, you know, it's a, a street that's small, the lot is small, and it really is a nice, nice yeah. piece of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it works well there. Yeah, R really does m make use having this little tucked away yeah. um, right. and, and I think the neighbor uses it as well you know his garage makes a perfect backdrop for that and yet he's you know separated from it yeah mm -hmm. yeah quite nice very well okay um, all right so um, I move that the board um, Take as findings the following determinations. A, whether an undesirable change will be produced. Um, the board finds that uh, no undesirable change will be uh, produced by the granting of this variance uh, because uh, in the first instance, um, this is a, these are existing structures that have uh, produced no problems in the past. And two, the board notes that the neighbors uh, to both the um, east and west along the two sidelines in question um, have submitted <laughs> um, affidavits um, attesting that there will be no um, negative impact. Two, whether the benefit can be sought by some other method, um, no, the, uh, the, the, the existing decks would require um, the variances um, and the, the only alternative would be to remove the decks, which is um, uh, simply not practical. Three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Uh, in the case of the swimming pool, um, it's a small deck. Um, it's um, located uh, five feet from the property line where 20 feet is required. Um, it's relatively well screened. Um, one could easily argue that this is not a, a substantial um, um, variant. Uh, in the other case, the the deck is abutting the property line, um, so it, it, it's it, it's mathematically it's a it's a very substantial variance. Um, on the other hand, when you look at the impact that this deck has, and the way in which the two neighbors have um, mutually. Um, agreed on on the structures. Um, it, in, in that sense, the the variance is not substantial. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions, uh, the board finds that there will be no adverse um, effect. Um, they have been there for a long time and not created any problems. 
Five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Um, yes, it, it was self-created uh, because the decision was made to, to build both of those decks. Um, but this does not um, necessarily preclude the um, granting of this variance. So move. Second. Second. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Art, I guess. Sure. <clears throat> I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth on item three. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in public hearing, results of the site visits by board members and the chairman's findings. In approving this variance, the board adopts as findings the determinations presented by our chairman. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Recusals? Okay, item three is approved seven to zero. Okay, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, I don't believe there are any other items. Let's just stay for the heck of it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can, but is there a motion to adjourn? Don't move. Don't move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>